Hello there. Today, we will be taking a look at all the table service and counter service restaurants, as well as all the various food carts in Disney's Animal Kingdom Park at Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida. If this is your first time visiting Disney Parks Attic, we like to make videos about all the Disney parks around the world. So if you're planning a Disney vacation or just a fan of the Disney parks, then consider subscribing to stay up to date with all my new videos. With each dining location in Animal Kingdom, I'll be sharing all of the menus and give my DPA picks on what to try at every restaurant. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can download all the menus in one easy folder. The first restaurant we will be taking a look at is right at the entrance of Disney's Animal Kingdom, and that is the Rainforest Cafe. Although you don't need to have a park ticket to dine at this table service restaurant, you can still enter from inside the park, so it still counts as an Animal Kingdom dining establishment. This is a great place to take young children as you dine inside an indoor rainforest alongside the sights and sounds of all your favorite jungle animals. The Rainforest Cafe is open for breakfast, lunch and dinner, so I would suggest either grabbing a delicious hearty breakfast before entering the park or making a late dinner reservation to wrap up your day at the amazing Animal Kingdom. The menu is standard American fare with burgers, steaks, pasta dishes and seafood taking up the majority of the choices. There is a great selection on the kids menu which should keep all your children delighted. My DPA pick for the Rainforest Cafe would be the Mojo Bones, a delicious half rack of slow roasted pork spare ribs with plenty of sides. And if you like your desserts, I would suggest sharing the Sparkling Volcano which is a huge rich chocolate brownie topped with ice cream and a variety of sauces. I will say that the Rainforest Cafe can get dark at times and there is a thunderstorm every 20 minutes which can get quite loud, but it sure makes your dining experience exciting. If you are looking for a fine dining restaurant, then this is not the place for you, but this is the perfect place to take your kids or just enjoy a good meal in an amazing atmosphere. Once you enter the park and work your way through the oasis, you will come to Discovery Island, which has plenty of dining options available. Let's start with the Eight Spoon Cafe, a great booth selling baked macaroni and cheese for a simple on-the-go lunch, as well as the classic Mickey pretzel, other snacks and cold beverages. My DPA pick would be the mac and cheese with pulled pork, which makes for an easy and fulfilling lunch. Another booth in Discovery Island is the Smiling Crocodile that serves a pulled pork jelly donut, street tacos and tamales along with soft drinks and beers. It's a weird choice but my DPA pick would be the pulled pork jelly donut just for the originality and I'm a fan of sweet and savory snacks. Next to the Smiling Crocodile is the Flame Tree Barbecue, a quick service restaurant serving awesome barbecue delights. My DPA pick would be the ribs and chicken combo so you can try a little bit of both meats along with their signature beans and coleslaw. They also offer plant-based and gluten and wheat allergy friendly offerings as well as salads and a nice selection of wines, beers and cocktails. There is limited seating around the back so I would suggest avoiding this at peak times. If you're looking for a pick me up then head to the Isle of Java a booth selling coffees, pastries and a few cocktails. My DPA pick would be the Tiger Tail Chocolate Twist and a Joffrey's Coffee Cold Brew, which is a great way to keep you going as well as keeping you refreshed in the hot weather. On the other side of Discovery Island towards Pandora is the excellent table service restaurant Tiffin's. You can discover a world of flavors with their global range of amazing dishes and beverages. The decor pays homage to all the countries that inspired the creation of the Animal Kingdom Park and was once home to Tiffin Talks, a special ticketed event that held talks by legendary Disney Imagineer Joe Rohde. The menu is so diverse that it is extremely difficult to make my DPA picks, but I'm going to choose the spiced chickpea falafel as an appetizer and the butter chicken for the main course. Next to Tiffin's is the Nomad Lounge 
which serves some small plates and has a wide selection of cocktails, beers and wines. As the name suggests, this lounge celebrates traveling the world and the thrill of discovery. It offers amazing indoor and outdoor seating that gives you some beautiful views of the park. My DPA picks would be the Impossible Sliders, which is a great small plate to share, and the Tempting Tigress Cocktail, which partners perfectly with the stunning views. Next is the amazingly bright and colorful Pizza Safari, which is a quick service restaurant that sells, you guessed it, pizza, as well as flatbreads and salads. There are five themed dining rooms with beautiful murals and mosaics of different animals from around the world. In the evenings, Pete Safari also offers a family style dining experience which lets you choose from a variety of pasta dishes, salads and customized pizza all for the price of one set fee. My DPA picks would be the classic pepperoni pizza and cannoli cake. Taking the path towards Africa, you will come to Creature Comforts, which is the park's Starbucks coffee. So expect to find all your usual Starbucks offerings, as well as some exclusive Disney-inspired pastries and merchandise. It's nicely decorated in an African theme. My DPA pick would be my usual Starbucks choices, which is a flat white and a pan au chocolat pastry. The final dining option in Discovery Island is Terra Treats, a booth offering pizzas, snacks, and drinks. My DPA picks would be the delightful spaghetti and meatball cupcake and the loggerhead, a nice, refreshing, non-alcoholic, apple-flavored cooler. Moving on to Dinerland USA and the perfectly named Restaurantosaurus, which serves burgers, hot dogs, nuggets, and salads in an awesomely themed dining area. This is a counter service restaurant, but they have recently started a special deal called Burgers and Sundays which offers some deluxe handcrafted burgers, plus a trip to the Build Your Own Sunday Bar. Another great thing about this restaurant is that all the kids' meals comes with a sand pail and shovel, or a bucket and spade, as I would normally call it, which can be used in the nearby boneyard. So it's a nice added bonus for dining here. My DPA pick will be from the Burgers and Sunday deal, and will be the Mushroom and Swiss Burger and that special Sunday. Next to Restaurantosaurus is the Dino Bite Snacks, a booth which offers sundaes, ice cream cookie sandwiches, floats and cones, all using Hagen dazs ice cream, as well as some other snacks and drinks. My DPA pick has to be the ice cream cookie sandwich, which can get messy, but is totally worth it. Near the entrance of Dino Land USA is Trilo Bites, a booth offering sundaes, floats and milkshakes, and their specialty buffalo chicken chips, which will also be my DPA pick for this food booth. The last booth in this area is the Dino Diner that serves hot dogs, snacks, churros, and a selection of drinks, including some draft beers. My DPA pick is the corn chip pie, which are tortilla chips loaded with lots of chili, cheese, and sour cream, and a nice cool Key West Sunset Ale to wash it down with. Moving round to Asia, one of my favorite areas of the park, especially for the food that is on offer. Close to the entrance of Expedition Everest is the Thirsty River Bar and Trek Snacks, with a huge selection of cocktails, beers and wines from their fully stocked bar, and popcorn and ice creams can be found next door in Trek Snacks. My DPA picks are the Flying Yak, a blend of mango puree and pineapple juice, and you can't go wrong with a Mickey Premium Bar on a hot Animal Kingdom day. If you're looking for a soft serve waffle cone or a Coke float, then head a little bit further down the path to the beautiful Anandapur ice cream truck. If you can't make a choice of having vanilla or chocolate ice cream in your waffle cone, then choose my DPA pick of a combination of both. Next is the Yak and Yeti which is comprised of a table service restaurant and two outdoor counter service restaurants. Let's start indoors with the Yak and Yeti table service restaurant. Sticking with the Nepalese aesthetic surrounding the area, this beautiful two-story restaurant offers pan-Asian cuisine. So expect plenty of curries, stir fries, noodles, and other delicious dishes. My DPA picks are the chicken tikka masala and the lo mien with shrimp. 
Also, the pork egg rolls are great to share for an appetizer. The Yak and Yeti local food cafes is one of the outdoor counter service restaurants and offers a similar choice of dishes, albeit on a much smaller scale. They also offer a limited breakfast menu serving breakfast bowls and muffins. My DPA picks would be the breakfast bowl with sausage for in the morning and the Korean fried chicken sandwich for lunch or dinner. The pork egg rolls I mentioned before are also available here, so grab them while you can. The other outdoor service point at the Yak and Yeti is Quality Beverages, which is a small hatch around the side of the building serving refreshing drinks and a few food items too. My DPA picks are the Asian Chicken Wrap, which is perfect for a light lunch, and the Frozen Emperor Margarita, which comes in a variety of flavors. Opposite the Yak and Yeti is Drink Walla, a booth specializing in frozen drinks. Cool down on a hot day with my DPA pick of a refreshing cup of frozen Coca-Cola, and if you want it with a kick, they can also add some Captain Morgan Spice Rum. If you head towards Africa, you will come to the last three dining options within Asia. The first is the Warung Outpost, serving frozen margaritas, beers, wines, and a few snacks including the Mickey Pretzel. My DPA pick is the Triple Yeti Blast, which is a combination of the three different frozen margaritas on offer. Next is Mr. Kamal's, a booth selling vegetarian food and drinks. I honestly like everything available at this booth, but my DPA pick would be Mr. Kamal's Seasoned Fries, which give you a selection of delicious dipping sauces. The last kiosk in Asia is Caravan Road, serving drinks and a couple of delicious Asian dishes. My DPA pick would be the Cantonese style char siu pork served with sticky rice. Now we move on to Africa with a great selection of unique dining locations. Let's start with Harambe Market, a counter service location offering African inspired barbecue and salads. I love the setting of this restaurant as it has been designed to look like it is set around an old colonial era train depot. My DPA picks here are the ribs and chicken bowl served with some delicious cilantro rice and mixed greens and some Serengeti sangria for a nice fruity beverage. Although it isn't listed as a restaurant, I can't make a food guide about Animal Kingdom without mentioning Zuri Sweet Shop as it offers plenty of snack items including caramel apples, cookies, brownies and a huge selection of candy. My DPA pick is the large Mickey chocolate chip cookie as it is perfect to share with the rest of your family or friends. Next is the delightful Tamu Tamu refreshments in the heart of Harambe village serving the Disney famous Dole Whips, desserts and beers. My DPA pick is the Simba Sunset, a classic pineapple Dole Whip with watermelon, strawberry and coconut syrups to give you a delicious fruity drink. If you are looking for character dining, then the Tusker House restaurant is the place for you. Join Safari Donald Duck and friends as you enjoy a delicious African inspired buffet for breakfast, lunch or dinner. The breakfast buffet is good, but I would suggest dining at lunch or dinner so you can try the different curries, fish and barbecue dishes along with a load of delicious side dishes. My DPA picks are the Peri Peri Salmon and for dessert, you have to try the banana bread pudding, which is offered at all three meal times. On the side of Tusker House is the Dawa Bar, where you can find some African inspired cocktails, beers and wines. It's a great place to get a drink before or after a reservation at the Tusker House restaurant. My DPA picks here would be the Kenyan Tusker Lager and the Lost On Safari cocktail. Right next to the Dawa Bar is the Kusafiri Coffee Shop and Bakery, which is perfect for an on-the-go breakfast where you can grab a biscuit, pastry, or a slice of quiche. They also offer curries for lunch and dinner and a selection of coffees and other beverages throughout the day. My DPA pick is the spinach and feta quiche and the huge elephant ear pastry. The last place to look for snacks in Africa is the Harambe Fruit Market, 
offering a wide variety of quick and simple snacks and drinks. You can grab a hot dog, a Mickey pretzel, fresh fruit or some muffins. My DPA pick is simply an apple and a bottle of water, as it's always difficult to choose healthier snacks when you're in a Disney park. We now move on to our final land and the last two dining locations in Animal Kingdom. In Pandora the World of Avatar, you can dine in Setuli Canteen, their counter service restaurant, which is among many people's favourite place to dine in all of Walt Disney World. They offer bowls of chicken, beef or shrimp, with a choice of noodles, rice, salad or potatoes and a selection of sauces. They are all delicious and offer a healthier alternative to other restaurants in the park. Although these bowls are great, my DPA pick is the cheeseburger steamed pods or bao buns, which are simply out of this world. They also offer a nice selection of unique alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks to try. The final location we're going to talk about in this video is Pongu Pongu. A booth near the exit of Avatar Flight of Passage, which serves grab and go breakfast snacks and some truly original drinks. My DPA picks are the colossal pretzel served with a beer cheese sauce and the fruity night blossom, which is a mixture of apple and pear limeade filled with passion fruit boba balls. So, there you have it my complete guide to all the dining locations in the Animal Kingdom Park. Have you dined at any of these restaurants? Let me know which are your favorite restaurants, snacks, drinks, or meals in a comment down below. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button, and if you're not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to keep up to date with all my content coming in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Disney Parks Addict.